It's very exciting to be here. Uh, we have a couple of important new pieces of news to share with you. Uh, today, we're introducing CXL 3.0 specification uh, on a public uh, site. So it's going public today. As you know, um, CXL uh, Consortium started with uh, nine promoters earlier uh, in 2019. <coughs> uh, CPU suppliers, uh, system suppliers, and uh, uh, hyperscalers got together, came up with important use cases that uh, needed to be resolved. And then later, uh, as Consortium grew, uh, other companies joined. And now we have uh, over 206 members uh, joining uh, the consortium. We started uh, CXL specification at uh, 1.0 when it was first released. And soon after that, <coughs> we added compliance chapter to that as part of CXL 1.1. And then uh, with only 15 members. Uh, when it grew to CXL 2.0, we had about 130 members. Uh, joining the uh, consortium, and now uh, we are at 3.0 uh, level. Uh, the specification is going public uh, today, and we have over 200 members as part of the uh, group group that's developing the specification. <coughs> so, uh, you know that uh, the reason that we have to have uh, this kind of a uh, effort is the fact that data is growing. Uh, requirements for computation is growing, and uh, the number of cores in CPUs are growing when we need more and more bandwidth uh, to memory, and memory itself needs to be efficient. And CXL provides that methodology for a infrastructure efficient enough for data centers and uh, large clouds. So you can, you can imagine uh, for computation, we need a compute element, and we need scratch pad memory and data needs to come to the uh, compute element and eventually the results need to be stored, uh, stored or sent over the fabric. So uh, throughout the history of computer science, we have created um, uh, extensive network from the processing element all the way to the uh, public networks. CXL sits smack in the middle of that as a fabric uh, close to the CPU and GPUs and DPUs and IPUs uh, between compute elements and memory elements. So uh, CXL 2.0, uh, as we started uh, the team, uh, based on initial uh, promoter companies and uh, immediate contributors who came in, it was a group effort. It was a team building effort on CXL 2.0 and uh, we created uh, a number of uh, features that I'm going to talk about in a minute. But uh, after the group formed, after the teams worked efficiently together, uh, they uh, tackled uh, more and more use cases, old use cases, doing them in a more efficient way using CXL, and uh, came up with new use cases. And because of all of that, uh, came up with features that uh, we all wanted to implement and CXL 3.0 is a collection of all those good features. Uh, CXL is uh, happening. Uh, it is real now. It is not just PowerPoints and uh, written specifications. People have already built uh, emulators, POCs, uh, based on FPGA, and uh, silicon-based solutions are already uh, out uh, in, in development and in validation and qualification. Uh, today, I hear that people do have uh, demos of these silicon-based solutions uh, at, uh, at, at the showroom. Uh, at uh, Supercomputing 21, there were a number of announcements, and more announcements will happen today. Another piece of news that I'd like to share with you guys is that um, uh, CXL is gathering momentum on other fronts as well. You have heard that uh, Gen Z uh, IP and assets um, were transferred to CXL in February. And uh, yesterday, um, Open Capi Consortium also announced the letter of intent to move uh, Open Capi and OMI uh, IP and 
all assets to CXL consortium as well. That makes it a, a wonderful environment for the two consortia to work together. Uh, there are a number of uh, members that already belong to both uh, consortia. Uh, having uh, the specification available to the team allows uh, team members as they tackle different use cases to be able to take advantage of uh, the IP and uh, techniques that are available either through Gen Z or OpenCAPI or OMI or CXL or whatever else they can invent uh, as new. So um, as I stated earlier, um, CXL spec is out. Uh, it was approved. It went through an extensive review and is out there. And also, uh, it's uh, my, uh, my, my proud pleasure to announce that it will be on public site. So it, will, it is a public uh, document now. It is uh, available for all developers to build to. So uh, uh, as you know, uh, the industry grows. Uh, use cases emerge. Old use cases, uh, people take a look and would like to build efficiencies around them. A lot of solutions that have been working very well using networks, using Ethernet, using RDMA over InfiniBand. Um, with CXL, you can bring them closer to memory. Memory and compute can be closer to each other. So the efficiency on moving data is a key point that we would like to promote using CXL, uh, not in a proprietary way, in a common and standard way. There have been a number of different solutions in the past that did a very good job of moving data, uh, but they were proprietary. Uh, CXL consortium as a standard-based uh, uh, specification uh, does that one with the number of companies involved and uh, common solutions emerge. So uh, a number of features uh, were developed to address that. I will go through those in a minute. Uh, but CXL at a high level provides a method for multi-ported devices. It provides a uh, enhancement in moving data through the fabric. The notion of fabric is introduced within CXL 3.0. And uh, because of that, uh, compute disaggregation and then composition of systems are possible through this methodology based on fabric manager, uh, based on uh, efficiencies in routing data through switches. Memory pooling was introduced as part of 2.0, uh, but there are enhancements here that I will get into in a minute. And uh, backward compatibility is very important for CXL consortium. Uh, one of the interesting features of this is that as CXL moved from 1.0 to 2.0, now to 3.0, it has created a number of features and capabilities as an a la carte offering. Uh, companies who are already building towards, let's say, 2.0 specification, when 3.0 spec is available, they can pick and choose features of CXL 3.0 and be 3.0 compatible. For example, uh, CXL 3.0 uh, uses uh, PCIe's physical layer for uh, running the uh, link at 64 gigatransfers per second as a new feature. Uh, but uh, if uh, companies are already building to 32 gigatransfers per second, they can pick and choose other features and not necessarily uh, tackle the uh, PAM4 model yet. That's the choice that they can make. So. Uh, as a summary, CXL 1.1 went out uh, with two major uh, uh, features uh, using the 64-byte uh, flip mode, uh, running at 32 gigatransfer per second, and uh, defining uh, device types uh, based on three protocols, .io, .mem, and uh, .cache. Uh, type 1 device uh, supports .io and .cache. Type 3 device supports .mem and .io, and uh, Type 2 device combines the two. It supports .io, .cache, and .mem. Those were the essential features of CXL 1.0. It 
it was basically designed for point-to-point -point connections. But as the team uh, formed, uh, the f immediately what uh, they saw was the need for fanning out uh, capabilities from one root port to multiple devices. For that, we introduced the uh, uh, CXL switch as a fan out device. And just because uh, we could, uh, once you fan out to devices and these devices are capable and memory devices are growing to have high capacity, it did make sense for a device to subdivide itself into multi-logical devices as an MLD and uh, be connected to multiple hosts. That introduced the concept of memory pooling. Uh, aside from that, because now we have a little bit more uh, uh, complex formation of devices and switches and uh, processors as uh, root complexes, um, the notion of security was important. So IDE as an encryption method over the link was part of the CXL 2.0 as well. So um, then as the team grew, as the uh, momentum got uh, formed behind CXL 2.0, different use cases were introduced. Old use cases were uh, explored for them to be more efficient. And a strong team got formed as part of multiple work groups, software work group, protocol work group, file work group, memory system work group, um, they, they all worked together to enable new features within CXL 3.0. Now, after a year and a half, uh, we are here, and the specification is complete on a number of new features. For example, on the bitrate, uh, we doubled the bitrate without adding latency using uh, PCIe Gen 6 uh, data rate at uh, 64 transfer, gigatransfers per second using PAM4. That was on the data rate. No, no additional latency, but increased uh, throughput. Uh, memory pooling that CXL 2.0 uh, offered, uh, it was very natural when you look at the topology, when you look at the system block diagrams, uh, multiple devices have access to the same memory device. Memory pooling did not allow data to move from one virtual hierarchy to another hierarchy, but memory sharing was a natural progression of memory pooling. With memory sharing, a segment of memory within a memory device can be allocated to more than one host. And the host, using cache coherence model of CXL, uh, can cache, actually, the shared uh, region of memory. For that, uh, uh, Techniques such as new memory channels, uh, new transfer channels, back and validated channel had to be introduced and invented, and that's what CXL 3.0 offers. Uh, in addition to that, on the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, connection, when you look at the block diagram, multiple devices connected to a switch, you can imagine that um, it is natural to expect devices to be able to talk to each other without having to go through the uh, CPU. Uh, for that, again, uh, back and validate channel will help. Accelerators talk to their subordinate devices uh, through the switch directly without having to choke bandwidth uh, through the processor. So um, these, uh, when you put all of these uh, elements together, you have switches that now with CXL 3.0 can be cascaded. It is not just one layer of switches. You can interconnect switches to each other using fabric ports. If you have memory on the fabric that can be uh, accessed by multiple hosts, they are in a form of a global fabric attached memory, GFAM. Uh, when you have uh, a larger fabric, Putting them all together, uh, it does uh, create a very robust fabric of interconnect available for large ensemble of devices, accelerators, memory devices, storage uh, elements, all on the same fabric. And system designers can choose to 
put them together in large ensembles and large crates and um, bring efficiency to the computing and composition of systems as we move forward. So uh, we encourage people to come and join, take advantage of all of these capabilities that your colleagues have already done. Uh, specification is nice and robust. We keep evaluating different use cases. For each use case, different companies, different individuals come up with proposals. Uh, they work together. They arrive at a common, effective method of implementing the solutions and eventually specifying them in a uh, coherent way so people can benefit and implement solutions. If I have time, I can show you some of these diagrams. Uh, Frank, do I have time? Yes. <laughs> All right, so to give you an idea, uh, again, CXL 2.0 had one layer of switching and offered uh, fan out to multiple memory devices, uh, but it's, it offered only one uh, uh, ca dot cache capable device. CXL 3.0 breaks that barrier, all of the devices can be type one, type two, or type three. Uh, do dot mem dot, dot cache on any of those devices. Uh, as I suggested earlier, multi-layer switching is capable uh, within CXL 3.0. Doing it that way, you can create topologies uh, like shown here, which allows different devices to reach from uh, one end of the fabric to the next, creating concept of disaggregated computing, and the reverse of that, composing new systems from this disaggregated computing. All that done using a fabric manager, a piece of software that can be in-band using a virtual machine running on one of the hosts, or it could be totally out-of-band out using MCTP-capable devices, uh, managing the interconnect between these devices. Uh, the concept of peer-to-peer -peer I touched on earlier. Uh, since we have a little bit more time, it's good to go over the diagram here. Uh, you see this switch is multi-host capable. Each color is designating a different uh, virtual hierarchy and different host ensemble. In this model, uh, host two uh, has access to device one, two, five, and six. Uh, these, all of these devices are within that uh, uh, virtual hierarchy, uh, whereas the device four has access only to uh, host number four. Now, within this uh, uh, switch interconnect, uh, devices one, two, three, and four can talk e to each other directly through the peer-to-peer -peer mechanisms uh, invented by, by the team using uh, uh, capabilities uh, that are there. The end result is that as compared to CXL 2.0, they do not have to enter, uh, connect to each other through the CPU. So the link between the CPU and the switch is not a choke point anymore. Uh, that is the value that CXL 3.0 is offering. Uh, we did talk about memory pooling. Memory pooling using switches takes advantage of a device that is a multi-logical device. A multi-logical device has multiple uh, segments of memory. Each segment can be dedicated to a host with the memory pooling concept. Pooling versus sharing uh, this ambiguation. Sharing allows multiple hosts to concurrently access the same region of memory within the device. Pooling does not allow that. So with sharing, uh, you see that S1, which is the shared region one, uh, can be cached by host one and host two, as an example. Uh, through that memory region, then host one and host two can talk to each other. Uh, they can pass data back and forth through memory, uh, very similar to what people expect from uh, symmetric, symmetrical multiprocessing systems, SMP systems. Uh, so devices can be developed to do pooling or support sharing. And the same devices can be put on a fabric, not only a, uh, a single layer of switch, but multi-layer of switch. Once we do that, 
those are globally fabric attached memory capable, so GFAM capable. This is an example that shows uh, memory pooling and memory sharing uh, done at the same time using a switch that is multi-host capable. Just again, to highlight, these concepts have, done, have been done in the past. Uh, the use cases that took advantage of these have been available. What CXL is doing is doing it in a standard way. Other, other companies have already done some of these features using PCIe. Having a multi-host capable switch within PCIe is what's been done before. But it's been done in a non-standard, did not follow PCIe standard, for example. They had to be done using proprietary capabilities. Uh, all these smart people got together as part of CXL, decided to do that one in a standard way, and the solution uh, emerged as part of CXL 3.0 uh, as a complete set uh, common for everybody to use. Thank you very much. They're asking for questions. Do we have time? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's working. Hello, hello, hello. So, um, uh, what is the purpose of integrating um, Gen Z and, and Open Capi into uh, into this forum or CXO? Are you going to run them in parallel, or take good things from those uh, standards and roll them into CXO 4.0 or whatever? What, uh, what, 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 I've, what I've seen is that a lot of good people have gotten together. We'll do what makes sense. Mm -hmm. I give you uh, examples. Um, uh, Gen Z uh, uh, companies, individual companies, joined CXL before the notion of uh, moving assets from Gen Z to CXL uh, was, was thought of. The individual members joined CXL. We were working towards building a larger fabric uh, as it is done by CXL 3.0. At the time, we were working on CXL 1.1 and 2.0. The notion, the use case emerged that, hey, OK, we do a nice interconnect between a CPU and a memory. Oh, what if we do more? And who has already done that more? Well, OK, Gen Z, that was the, their, their central focus for that. Individual companies got together. As a matter of fact, we did it first. We did an MOU. We created a subgroup that was a, 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 a intersection of Gen Z members and CXL member companies. They worked together to come up with definition of that use case, and that definition of use case eventually would, could, uh, be introduced into CXL or could be introduced into Gen Z. So we worked under that environment for a while, and after, after that, the people saw that it was kind of uh, inefficient. The best method forward was for people to just feel comfortable using their own experiences, using the tools that are available to, to, to themselves into one common form without having to worry about IP contamination or sharing or any of those blocking minds. So that model worked very well because after Gen Z was formed, people saw that, ah, oh, okay, this is the way I used to do it this way, now it does make sense to do it within CXL. And they didn't label it that, hey, this is a particular method that I'm doing came from a particular chapter of Gen Z, but it was just in their brain. They, they, they just knew how to do that. So CXL 3.0 is a collection of things that, that came from their past experiences, their understandings. The same uh, can be expected of uh, OpenCAPI and OMI uh, assets moving into CXL Consortium. So the members of CXL Consortium, which will be a, a, a union of uh, the two consortia uh, will have access to all the uh, assets that are available and pick and choose whatever makes sense to address the best way uh, a particular use case of interest to the community. Thank you. Uh, I have a second question. So uh, CXL 3.0 just got introduced and uh, as you know, it's probably very complex. We have seen standards with uh, 
uh, fabric integration and multi-host integration into that. The solution will require multiple players to come together to offer a solution. So when you look at your crystal ball, when do you think the actual broad-based systems will be deployed using 3.0 uh, uh, specification? And not just in, in like boutique applications, but broad-based uh, applications. Thank you. Uh, a lot of times to address questions like this, as, as you said, look at the crystal ball. Uh, sometimes it is very hard to know what will happen, but it is sometimes easier to understand what will not happen. Uh, if we're working as a community of smart people from different companies, uh, everybody's trying to invent something new, do something useful. So what I can predict will not happen is that if we have a force, force fit shoehorning solutions. So that will not happen. Uh, it might happen for one month, one generation, but it will not prevail. So what I'm encouraging people to do is to identify important use cases, come up with solutions, perhaps at the beginning multiple solutions that need to be uh, merged and receive feedback. And based on the feedback, solutions can form and gel into something that's solid so it can stay uh, the course. Uh, that I expect to happen, especially uh, with putting a lot of wood behind the same arrow all of the smart people used to do open capi and OMI and Gen Z and, and, and CXL, now they are part of the same team. Uh, please join, please help them, uh, come up with your own use cases that are important, come up with your proposals, uh, work together, receive feedback, and uh, put it into the uh, CXL 4.0 spec. You mentioned that the understand how you're saying that we're getting more gig transfers and what, how does like, the, the new spec relate to flit efficiency? Um, so uh, as, as far as uh, uh, CXL goal has been to, again, take advantage of the good work that's been done elsewhere. So on a physical layer, CXL is drafting what PCIe SIG is, PCI SIG is doing. So. At the beginning, uh, PCA Gen 5 running at 32 uh, uh, gigatransfer per second was established. Uh, a lot of us have already designed to PCA 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and soon 6. So it does make sense to take advantage of that uh, efficiency, the design tools, debug tools, uh, protocol analyzers, all of the tools that have already been built around that physical layer. So, Taking advantage of physical layers already established was important. On top of that, the protocol layers uh, were, were there to produce the results here. The same thing is happening as uh, uh, bit rates uh, go up from 32 gigatransfer to 64 using PAM4 and PCA6. It does make sense for CXL to pick that up. It's efficiencies, security, uh, and, 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 and robustness, the bit error rates, are all part of that physical layer as well. So again, uh, if the solution is working, we'll use it. If the solution is not working to the fullest uh, possibility and there are inventive people as part of the team, we can, in fact, uh, deviate from that. But to the extent that it's physical layer working, we will use it. Hi, this is, hi, this is Rishikesh from Samsung. I uh, just wanted to have a higher level question, and I'm not a DRAM person. Uh, so uh, adding all these switches, multiple levels, it will add latency. And you know, what is that impact? Is it like 30%, 2x, 3x? And uh, whatever the impact is, doesn't it dilute the value proposition of DRAM? I mean, people pay for DRAM because they get that lowest latency. Um, so, uh, are there still like use cases willing to pay st the same cost of DRAM for a diluted latency? Okay, uh, very good question. Uh, so, uh, it is true. It is the fact that uh, when you when signals go through a, a physical element such as a switch, they will incur latency. That is the fact. Uh, signal going across a cable uh, takes latency also. Speed of light. I'm uh, close. Uh, 
So latency is there. And the question is, how much is the latency? Is the latency affordable or not? Compared to other solutions, if we were to do memory disaggregation using uh, common solutions such as Ethernet, you can imagine the latency through that is large, and large enough that those solutions that we talked about did not emerge. So CXL says, yeah, latency is there, but now latency is much smaller. Uh, the latency target that we have asked people to work through is 50 nanoseconds through each hop in each direction. But I've seen people beating that. They can do less than 50 nanoseconds of latency through one of these uh, physical elements. So it does make sense if you add uh, uh, layers of switching for every hop of that to incur some latency, 50 nanoseconds plus or minus. So the end solution is to take a look at what is the end device that I have on the other side, what value it is providing to me as far as pooling, sharing, and, and consolidation of other things compared to what I already have. I already have RDMA using InfiniBand or uh, uh, DMA or Ethernet methods. I already have those. So if will CXL bring something new to me? Yes. It seems that the latency is getting smaller and smaller and other capabilities for cache coherency is there also. When you put them all together, applications can uh, emerge to take advantage of it. Uh, one simple model to think about is if you have one memory controller, one CXL memory controller connected to the CPU, the latency expectation for DRAM behind that CXL controller is the same latency expectation that you have if you have two processors that are interconnected to each other. So the memory off of the second processor, one NUMA node, uh, is one NUMA hop away. That is the framework to work through, and you know that people have built dual socket, four socket, eight socket systems. The applications work well in those environments. For the value they gain, they have accepted that latency impact. So therefore, it goes that CXL will be successful.